Hello everyone, and welcome in. Well, in the last episode, we finished construction on this T55, and there's a link up above in the corner, and I'll put one down below. In this episode, we'll concentrate on laying down the base colors on this beast. So let's get moving. I thought it might be nice that before I started painting, that I put a little context as to what this model's about and where I want to go with it. The setting is in Somalia. Country had collapsed and in its wake had come terrorist organizations, most specifically Al-Shabaab, who had ties to Al-Qaeda. Now these were some bad guys. Think Black Hawk Down when you think of these guys. In response to these events, the United Nations in 2007 authorized the African Union mission in Somalia or Amazon as it became known. Their mission was, and still is, help with the refugee crisis, create stability in the neighborhood, and rid the area of all these bad hoodlum dudes. Over the next years, there were a number of skirmishes between the Al-Shabaab group and the UA forces, but none of these skirmishes were very decisive. It wasn't until May of 2012 when UA forces, along with Somali forces, pushed hard into the Mogadishu suburbs and were finally able to push out the terrorist organization. And now that we have a little bit of context, let's get back to the model. The images of these bad boys you're looking at right now are from the Uganda army, who were part of the UA in this push through Mogadishu. These were some of the inspiration and references I'll be looking at as I'm doing the painting and weathering on this T-55 AMV. It's always a good idea to prime your models, but with a model like this where you have photo etch or maybe resin, it's an absolute necessity if you want your paint to stick. Just a little prep work here, taking the wheels off, get ready for the next steps. Oh, get back here. This model, especially with the ERA blocks, has so many ins and outs and underneaths and undercuts and nooks and crannies that I want to make sure I get all those shadow areas all taken care of. For this, I'm using AK Real Colors Black 6RP, just a really nice dark, almost gray black color. And I'm just making sure that I have all those areas that are going to be hard to reach when I do more painting, that they're just covered up. I don't want any of this gray primer to be exposed on the final model. I take a little extra time around the ERA blocks, making sure I get everything in between and underneath. The same holds true on the rear deck, especially around the intakes. You want to shoot some color down inside just to make sure it's nice and dark. As you noticed in those reference photographs, these vehicles took quite the beating, and I want to show that on my model as well. And so to prepare for that, I just want to lay down what would be the foundation for this primer layer. And that's going back and forth between that gray color and red-brown or rot-brown in this case. Just making sure I have a really good color which to chip down onto. And whoops, looks like I'm going to need to glue that fender box back on. And of course, the same process was done on the turret. Again, just making sure that those areas around the ERA blocks are really nice and covered. Once the primer colors are dry, and it really doesn't take very long with these AK Real colors, then I come back in with the chipping fluid. I'll be showing the chipping process a little bit later on in the video, but the theory here is, if I lay down this chipping layer over the primer, the primer color, and then I lay down my base color, and then maybe layer another layer of chipping fluid, and then the camouflage, as I chip through, some of this primer, the primer color, will become re-exposed. And that will add the nice chips and patina to the finish of these beat up vehicles. And just for reference, I applied two, I don't know, light to medium, layers of the chipping fluid before starting with the base color. As for the actual colors of these vehicles, well, other than looking at the pictures, I really didn't have a good reference as to what the actual colors of these Uganda tanks were painted. My guess was is that they purchased these in the aftermarket at some point from some satellite country that was probably painted from the factory in the Russian green color. So that's kind of what I'm going with here. Well, anyway, that's my story, and I'm going to stick with it. With the base green color applied, I'm once again going to add some of the chipping fluid overall. I imagine it's a little hard to keep score here, so let me try to back up and clarify. We first added the primer color. Over that, I've added a layer of chipping fluid. Over that, I've added the green base color. And then now I'm adding 
another layer of chipping fluid. This final layer of chipping fluid is going to allow me to distress or chip the camouflage colors that I'll be applying next. And for the first camo color, and once again, I'm basically guessing at the colors here. Some of the references look very pale, some of the references look very yellowish in color for these light bands of camouflage. In terms of the exact color, well, I really don't get hung up with that. If it looks good, that's good enough for me. As for the actual pattern itself, well, again, there's not a lot of reference on this. The instructions do provide a color profile of a Uganda vehicle, but I'm not really sure how accurate that might be. When I look at the reference photographs, the camouflage patterns between vehicles seems to be fairly inconsistent. So I feel like I have some leeway here to kind of create my own scheme within certain boundaries. Speaking of reference, I'm curious to know if you like the little history lesson at the beginning of this video, and if that's something you'd like to see these segments continue in upcoming videos. Let me know in the comments below. Not to be forgotten, I have been working on the side skirts along with the rest of the vehicle here, and right now I'm just trying to match up the camouflage so it looks like it overlapped and was in place while the paint was being applied. The second camouflage color is a brownish red color that I see on the references. And since I'd already used the red brown or the rot brown as part of the primer colors, I wanted something a little bit different for the camouflage in case I chipped down through it. And so for my choice for this color, I just went with NATO brown and it looks pretty good. I'm okay with this. In all honesty, this actually looks like a late war German vehicle camouflage. But once you get to these ERA blocks, then it starts looking a little bit more post-war and a little bit more aggressive. So now we have a really nice camouflage vehicle. It looks nice and pretty. Everything matches nicely. Beautiful. About time to start beating it up, don't you think? Now it's time, you guessed it, for chipping. So weapons of choice here. Nice glass of water, some old paint brushes, nothing fancy here, and a toothpick or two. And then I always like to have some paper towels because this is kind of a wet and messy process. I know that many of you are already familiar with chipping and how the chipping process works, but I'd like to recap just to get everybody up to speed. So I began with a base primer color and over that I added the chipping fluid. And this is also known as the hairspray technique. And then over that layer of chipping fluid, I added the base green color. The trick here is, is that that layer of chipping fluid or hairspray is water soluble. So now you have a layer of paint, a layer of water soluble product, and then another layer of paint. So in this example, if we scrub with a brush that's moistened with water or even with a toothpick and give a little scratch, eventually the water will hit the layer of chipping fluid. And because it's water soluble, it'll begin to dissolve that water soluble layer between the primer layer and the green layer. And so because the green layer is painted directly on this water soluble layer, the chipping layer, as the water dissolves that layer, it will flake off, the green paint will flake off, and that will leave us the small chips exposing the primer layer below it. And then as you recall, on this model, I added a second layer of chipping fluid over the green color before I added the camouflage. And so now, as I scrub over the model, I will either expose the green underneath the camouflage or the primer underneath the green, depending on how far down the chips go. And this is one of those processes you really don't want to rush yourself through. And every time you do this, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, depends upon so many different factors, how much chipping fluid you apply, how thick the paint is, things like that. So start slow, figure out where, it, where the chips are happening and how fast they're happening, how big they're happening, and then go from there. Another key point in doing this type of chipping is to think about realism here. Where is it that the scuffs, the scratches, the wear and the tear would actually have taken place? You know, if you do a lot of chipping in a place that's really not exposed, that really doesn't make as much sense as say on top of you know, a walking area or top of the fender or near the crew hatches where a lot of action by the crew or boxes being moved across the, the engine deck or something like that would cause this type of chipping. So, you know, again, references are key here and take a look at, you know, equipment or whatever in your natural environment and just see where these types of chips and scuffs and abrasions naturally happen and try to replicate that on your model. And so with you know, a few hours of working on the chipping, 
Um, I have everything pretty much where I want it to be right now. And this is what I would consider my base painting completed. I have my base colors, I have it camouflaged, and I have it chipped back, and I have some very interesting things to start working with. Here's a little closer look at some of the chips and scuffs that we've created. And again, I'm pretty happy with this, so this is a good start. And this puts us right where we need to be for the next video. And the next video is going to be about oils, acrylics, and we'll get this thing really set up for final finishing. So I really hope you stay with me for that. And in the meantime, please hit that like and subscribe button. And please check out the other videos that were preceding in this series. I'll link to them below in the comments section. And if you have comments for me, please leave them as well. And again, if you like that little historical section one way or another, let me know about that as well. And I'll talk to you on the next video. Take care and keep on modeling.